Hello and welcome back. In the last video, we went through the solution of single degree of freedom system in the free vibration, assuming that there is no damping in the system. And we found that if there is no initial deformation or initial uh, velocity, the system might not be under any kind of motion. However, there is an example that I can make without any external load the system starts to vibrate, but the solution would be a little bit different. Let's take a look on what I have in my mind. This time, assume that we have a beam supported by a fixed connection at one end and with the length of L. Assuming that there is a rope or cable keeping the system and also assume that we have a concentrated mass at the tip of this cantilever with the mass of M. And we assume that the cable is cut suddenly. If we look at the system, there is no initial deformation. Also, there is no initial velocity. But the difference is that the mass has not been making any aesthetic deformation in advance. Let's have a look on what we have in the ideal model. Assume we have the spring with the constant K and we have a mass of M. First, assume that you gently start to allow the mass just move to its aesthetic deformation or elongation of the spring. So in that case, nothing would happen because it is a static case. There is no external load and also there is no initial state. As a result, if you just gently bring it down to its maximum elongation that it can make after moving, this is U aesthetic. Nothing happens if it comes gently to this location. But if you suddenly leave it and just, just remove the hand or, for example, the force without letting it to deform for aesthetic maximum elongation, then it starts to oscillate. So it means that it starts to vibrate without external load. The difference between the previous example is that the solution might be different. Let's have a look on what happens here. Now we have the mass M. This time we have Mg, which is a kind of external force in calculation, but it is not, a, let's say, periodical force or harmonic force. It's just the weight, but it was not considered in the initial state. And the beam has a kind of stiffness, okay? If we assume we have a beam and a force at the tip of this cantilever, then the maximum deformation of this beam with the stiffness of, uh, electrical stiffness of EI, delta will be FL over by 3 divided by 3 EI. So the stiffness is always F divided by delta. As a result, it will be 3 EI over L3. So we have the K, 3 EI over L3, and we have the force Mg. Here we will have K times U, and also we have the inertia, which is M U double dot T. If we compare this free body diagram with the previous solution that we made, we have a kind of external force, but it's not external force. It's a constant force. And because of sudden applying of this load to the system, it makes the differential equation to be different. Now let's have a look on the deformation, uh, on the governing equation, mu double dot t plus k u t equals to mg. Now you can see that the, let's go with the constant M, capital M as the mass of the system. So here we can see that the equation is different from what we had in the general solution. It would be good for starting the solution of this type of equations. Later on, we will go through a harmonic load. Uh, for solving this type of equations, first of all, let's have a better format plus K over M. U T equals G. 
and k over m is omega s square now our equation is u double dot t plus omega s square u t equals g so it's non-homogeneous uh, equation i have one uh, video in differential equation playlist that you can check how to find out the solution for this type of uh, ordinary second order equations the u will be a cosinus omega t plus b sinus omega t plus g over omega s square this is particular solution and the other one is general solution this is general solution and this is particular solution omega square is k over m and then we can write down that this is mg over k the entire term then we need to apply the initial state we know that in the beginning of this accident u0 is 0 u.0 is 0 so if i apply this u dot t will be minus a omega sinus omega t plus b omega cosinus omega t so u0 is 0 then 0 equals to a plus mg over k and u dot 0 is 0 0 equals to 0 plus b omega as a result b is 0 and a will be minus mg over k here we can see that even though u0 and u dot 0 are both 0 but uh, the equation has the solution I can rewrite ut equals to minus mg over k cosinus omega t plus mg over k. And I can simplify it to ut equals to mg over k times 1 minus cosinus omega t. Let's have a numerical example and find out how it works. Assume we have a beam. With the length of two meters from a steel and hea 200 with a concentrated mass which is one tons for example and we assume it is connected with a cable and then suddenly it is cut first we can calculate k is 3 ei over l3 for hea 200 E, we can assume it's 200 gigapascal. Moment of air inertia is 36.92, 10 power by 6 millimeter for about the strong axis. L is 2 meters, so K will be 3, 200 gigapascal times 36.92, 10 power by 6 millimeter for divided by 2 meters power by 3. 3 times 236.92 will be 2769 newton per millimeter and then mass is 1000 kilogram so we can calculate natural frequency 2769 divided by 1000 kilogram so this is important to use the proper unit here it is newton per millimeter then I have to write it in the format of newton per meter otherwise you will find it a strange value so it will be 2769 10 power by 3 newton per meters it will be 52.6 radian per second and t will be 2 pi divided by omega which is 0 0.12 seconds and also you can calculate frequency in hertz which is 8.3 hertz let's also calculate the maximum deformation back to the solution it will be mg divided by k 1 minus cosinus omega t i can bring this to next page mg over k it is 1000 kilogram times 9.81 meter per square second divided by k is 2769 10 power by 3 newton per meter times 1 minus cosinus omega t so 1000 times 9.81 2769 it will be 0 0.0035 or in meter and then i can rewrite it to 3.5 millimeter times 1 minus cosinus omega t the maximum displacement will be when cosinus omega t is going to be minus one if cosinus omega t is minus one then one plus one will be two and then u t max or u max will be 3.5 millimeter times one plus one which is seven millimeter but u aesthetic is 
f divided by k f is the value of mg which is 1000 kilogram times 9.81 meter per square seconds divided by 2769 and power by 3 newton per meter which is 3.5 millimeter you can see that the maximum deformation in this case is twice as the static deformation we can check the equation from the MATCAD as well how it looks like uh, we have a different equation u0 we don't need this we can just write simply okay e equals 200 gigapascal and moment of inertia is 3 6.92 10 power by 6 millimeter power by 4 mass is 1000 kilogram k is calculated according to okay let's write down l first l equals to 2 meters and now we can calculate k which is 3 times e times i divided by l power by 3 k m then t is 0 0.12 f is correct and here we can just simply go with another equation for ut i can close this one ut is m times g divided by k remember that if you do not use g for another uh, parameter then it is by default we can write down here 9.881 meter per square second one minus cosinus times uh, cosinus of omega times t and here we are if you want to see in millimeter we can change this to millimeter and here we can see that it's uh, about seven millimeter and as you can see it is not going to be negative it starts from that point and then it goes to maximum position coming back to the same position because 3.5 is the static level below the horizontal position what else we can go through if you model the same beam with a kind of software the mass will be a little bit more than this value for example then you can see that the frequency is going to be less than that it means that if you model it with any kind of finite element software that are capable of calculating the natural frequency in this case you might see if it is going to be 1100 then it should be 7.98 however this is just a very rough calculation as far as the beam is not a centered mass it's a distributed mass over the length which is out of this example that's it in the next video i'm going to model the same uh, with ANSYS that we can see how the uh, model and also how to find this frequency that's the end of this video we went through one more example in single degree of freedom free vibration however the equation was a little bit different because we had uh, a sudden mass load applied to the system in the next video i will model the same question with uh, ANSYS and we will see how to find out the proper frequency of the system thank you for watching see you next time bye